back of the back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Holy bucket. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not... Dean J. D'Amelio, the bouncer, eight years on the job, he'll kick your ass. 1-800-5800-TOM, it's Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. So, I've got a question. Um, my husband and I want to find, like, a hot girl that we can mess around with, but not have her, like, you know, every once in a while, but not have her get a stalker on us. And I'm just not sure how to, like, go about doing it. Well, first of all, you're already bored with your marriage, are you? No, no, we're not bored. We have plenty of really good sex. It's just he knows I'm bisexual and he likes watching with other girls. Um, well, it's only, like, happened once, but... Well, you have to understand, first of all, I think... I, personally, I've recommended the guys not to marry a bisexual. You can have fun with a bisexual, but uh, no bisexual is going to be monogamous. No, I am, and I plan on being. It's, well, once it's, once it's you bring another girl into the room, you've not been monogamous. You've just been polygamous with his approval. Yeah, but, I mean, if we're both, if we all, like, agree on it, I don't see what the problem is, you know? Well, I will tell you what the problem is. If you get into the sack with a chick who really floats your boat more than he does, and it is possible, that could be the end of your marriage. I always put my relationship with him first. And so if anything, like, if I see it um, interfering with our relationship, I, I'm out, you know? What if he found somebody to be hotter than you? He's, he's the same way. I mean, we're really honest with each other. You have no idea. You know what? I have known so many people who do what you do. Mm -hmm. But you see, you're 27. I've known them when they're 35 and 40. <laughs> and I'm telling you. That's where it goes. I've, I've known people who've done it, too, and their relationships have survived. How and, old you know, are they? What's their age? Yeah. How old are they? They're, they're in their mid-20s as well. That's what I'm saying. You mean later on? Uh, yes. Oh. Um, so but... unless you are uh, on a starter marriage that was only intended to, you know, like certain uh, TV shows to run only for a couple of seasons. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not. That is where it's going to go. Mm hmm So you're saying it's not good at all, no matter how much fun it is? No, I don't think it is. I think if you need to do things like that, you shouldn't be married. It's not that we need to. It's just... It's, yeah, well, it's you're doing it. It's a few times that it's happened. Well, you know, you should have had fun before you got married. Marriage and is we, not fun. It's miserable. We have plenty of fun, even without the girls. No. Well, We'll see how much fun you're going to have once one of you finds one of the girls to be hotter than you or him. I don't know. I don't think I don't think that would happen with us. I don't know. But I guess people say that all the time, huh? Well, that, that's exactly what they say. Yeah. Now, what if we hooked you up with Holly the Dyke? How would that work? No, no. <laughs> that's not like somebody I'd like. Come to, on. Uh, Holly knows how to have fun. She'll... Uh, the harness. She's got the harness. She'll bring the E. Yeah, but how She's many times wife the pipe? Like a dyke dyke. You know what I mean? So you're, you're not into dyke dykes? No, no. I like the girly girls. I see. Well, so does she. Yeah. She'd love you. 
Yeah, but he wants to see two girly girls going at it, not a girly girl and a man girl. I've never seen Holly. I can only guess. Uh, yeah. Well, they call her Holly the Dyke, so there must be a reason, right? Right. Uh, she calls herself Holly the Dyke. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I don't want to be with a girl who calls herself a dyke. Uh, okay. Just checking. Anyway, dear, uh, you know, so we start off with that. I don't think that's good for a marriage. I don't. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately it's destructive. Because I mean, we're always like really communicative about it, and you know, and I no, don't no, it. you know, everybody. Yeah. Oh, we're you know we're very communicative about it, and we we like we talk everything out, and we you know we won't go over certain lines. It's like everybody says this stuff. Blah blah blue. But we put it to practice in the few times that we have done it. You're still doing it. Yeah. And you're going to keep doing it. And then at some point, dear, if you are indeed bisexual, at some point you're going to do it without him around. Because no. you've already gone. The, you say no now, but you've gone this far. And sometime you're going to have girls night out or girls weekend away or girls pajama party or something. And uh, you're going to say, what the hell? He wouldn't mind. I don't know. I know myself. Like, well, I know myself now, and I know You're now. only 27 years old. You don't know what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're going to do when you drink too much, or if you smoke a little weed, or whatever you do. Okay. So, now, having said all that, how do you get a girl? Yeah. Is that your I question? Mean, it's, always been, it's always been accidental, like a friend of a friend at a party. It's never been like... We've never gone out seeking. It's just sort of happened. Like she's most well, of the time. The way really people drunk. generally do this is that the couple goes to a bar, and the chick has to go and do the asking. Mm-hmm. Usually, the guy will scan the room and say that one, this one, this one, that one, and then you have to go up, and uh, you have to close the deal. It seems like like Carla has to find a girl who's gonna like sleep, like I guess has lesbian tendencies. And also, well, is comfortable enough to, like, be with two people at once. You know what I mean? Oh. But I guess if she's drunk So enough. you've got a list of qualifications <laughs> here. Maybe you should make them submit a resume. No, that's not. But you know what I mean, though? Like, it's hard to find girls who are comfortable enough. It seems like it's hard to find girls who are comfortable enough to be with or even to fool around in front of another person. I don't know. You know, again, first of all, what you're proposing to do, much as, as common as you think it is, mm-hmm. is not that common. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the, you know, first of all, getting married, first of all, getting married and moving to Pleasantville or wherever you live, Wisteria Lane or whatever, and then going out trying to find girls to come back to your little tract home. This is not the way suburbia works. I mean, when people do the kind of stuff you do, they generally are unmarried. They generally live in the city. <laughs> uh, they generally uh, hook up and then unhook up and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. So what you are doing is generally the province of the fat, old, and ugly, the ones you find in nudist publications playing badminton or getting their uh, pubic hair singed off by having a barbecue. That, that is who usually does this stuff. Really? Uh, okay. I mean, where do you live? Riverside. In in the city of? Yes. There's not much of a scene here. Well, right. So you got married and you moved to Riverside. Well, we lived, we lived there. You've we always lived in Riverside. There. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the way you do this is, first of all, you live in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Or you live in Westwood. Or you live in Venice. Yeah. I mean, who are you going to meet in Riverside in a bar? That's my problem. See? That's my I mean, problem. where do you do? Go to Macaroni Grill and see who's into a threesome? We don't even have a Macaroni Grill. So, you know. All right. But you, know. El Torito, TGI Fridays. Where do you go yeah. in Riverside? Um, There's not many places to go. You go to the bar at the Mission Inn? Yeah. Most of the time. Hang out in the lobby there. of the Mission Inn and see who checks in? <laughs> oh. 
Maybe that hit a little too close to home. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Paul on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Yeah, I just want to say you have changed my life. Really? You have. I was sitting there seeing this chick for a while, and I don't know why I was stupid enough to do so, but she would constantly, constantly nag me, oh, you got to take me here, take me there. you got to go somewhere expensive. We never go out. So I started listening to you because a friend of mine turned me on to you. And I kept thinking, what would Likas do in this situation? So I said, fine, I'll take you somewhere expensive. I put her in the truck and took her to a gas station and left her there. I love that. Very nice. That's all I wanted to say. Can you blow me up? You bet I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Tony. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, know if, what you thought about that Yankee slugger, Hideki Matsui, who got married just to win a bet. He did? Yes, it was in the news yesterday. Who made the bet with him? Uh, Derek Jeter and Bobby Abreu. Derek Jeter and Bobby Abreu bet Hideki Matsui that he wouldn't get married, and he did get married. Who did he marry? Uh, it didn't say, but he, well, um... Supposedly, Matsui knew that he was going to get married six months ago, and that's why he took the bet. Oh, I see. So he suckered them. Yes. Oh, good for him. Of course, now he's married. He's going to suffer now. <laughs> he won this bet, but uh, how's it going to go long term? Exactly. They asked him if he got married just to win the bet, and he said, yeah, maybe. I did. Is he marrying an American or somebody from Japan? Actually, they didn't say yeah. no. It was in the Associated Press. Yeah. Did we get our copy of the Associated Press today, Kerry? Actually, it was yesterday, March 27th. I just checked my front door and see if that came. The dog peed on it. Yeah. That was, no, that girl came and peed on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Tony, I hadn't heard about that story because, you know, it's one of those New York stories everybody in New York cares about, but... And then they think the rest of the country is well aware of what's going on, but we're not. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. David on the Tom Liga Show, listening to our show online from Colorado Springs. Hello. Buenas tardes, Senor Tom. David! <laughs> How are going? you? Good. Oh, man. I'm glad I got on. I love your show. been listening to your show for eight years. Really? Oh, yeah. I used to live out in California, work in the uh, for L.A. County. I'm in Colorado Springs now. Wow. Yeah, but uh, I want to get your take on that uh, that that fugly girl from uh, Tessa with her nipples and stuff like that, the uh, earrings. No, 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 not the TSA. You're talking about the uh, oh, yeah, yeah. TSA, there you go. Tessa. <laughs> TSA. Yeah, TSA. Yes. I mean, you know, do you think she's, she's after money? You're talking about the girl who was, this is, well, is she after money? She's hired Gloria Allred to be her attorney. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, this is the woman who was uh, going through the uh, screening process at the airport, and she had nipple rings. Correct. That yeah. set off the x-ray machine. Yeah. And so they said, come over this way. And I guess uh, they took her to a room and uh, removed her uh, undergarments, found the nipple rings, and then they made her remove the nipple rings. And uh, I guess for, to get one of them out, she had to use a pair of pliers. And it was very painful. Mm. So now she's suing. Now, my question is, how about the guys that had to sit there and look at those saggy breasts? Well, now, I don't know if there were guys in the room, but the way they generally do this, they generally have a, because well, I've been searched at the airport many times, and they generally do, if they're going to do a pat-down or more, it's generally it's supposed to be same gender. Well, because I know, I saw the conferences, you said there were uh, two females and four guys. There. Well, that's the thing. She's claiming there were two guys with an earshot snickering. Now, I don't know if that means they could see it, where they could just hear her going, ah! as she was pulling the nipple rings out. Well, I think they should get paid for either seeing it or listening to that. Well, I have. Yes, I have seen the picture of this woman, and uh, <laughs> oh, boy. She's a winner. I'll tell you what, nipple rings. <laughs> well, Tom, thank you so much, and uh, I got my three nephews listening to you. They're, in, they're 15 years old. They love your show. I love your show, and... Uh, 
here at work, I have my coworkers listen to you every day. I listen to you about four hours a day. Well, all, all your whole show. Oh, I love that. Yeah, and uh, hopefully you can come over here and do a live show out here. Oh, but, I would love to. Oh, I love it. I would love to. Of course, we're not on the radio in Colorado Springs, but I'll tell you what, if you can get a local station to put us up, we'll do it. Well, they need something because they got some crappy stations out here. Yeah, well, they they could, clearly you need to tell them about the Tom Likas show and tell them you want to hear it. Trust me, there's a, a, enough people here with the sheriff's office that that, hear, that know about you. Love it. <laughs> can you take me out with that guy who killed his wife? Oh, Freddie Wilhite, of course I can. I shot my wife in the stomach with 38. Why did you do this? She enticed me and she ridiculed me throughout my lifetime. I'll see if she's alive. She's alive? She's dead. I think she's dead. Tom Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Like it Show. The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Anything goes here. Eddie, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Cool. Uh, I had a question. I, I love your advice about the women aspect, but I rarely hear you talk about the investment side. This one well, I, I, have, I have talked about it. Uh, well, it's just not, not a regular women. feature on the show. Absolutely, and I, I enjoy your advice, and I know that you're a abundance of information in terms of investment. So I wanted to get your opinion on a cash value life insurance policy. I uh, I personally am not a fan of life insurance. Okay. I know all the insurance salesmen hate me when I say that, but um, you know, insurance, in my view, is just uh, a, a, a method of forced savings. Okay. Uh, I, I don't believe the returns are all that wonderful. Uh, look, I would say if you're planning on being married for 60 years and you've got a wife who's not working and she's going to need something when you're gone, insurance is a great idea. But okay. well, I, I, don't have, the, I don't have any life insurance at all. At okay, all. but I've heard that there's a lot of tax advantages to that. You know, with the, the cash value building up, you can pull that out on a tax-free basis, which there's not a whole lot of vehicles out there that allow you to do that. Uh, there's a Roth IRA, but if you... Yeah, but, uh, you, but how much do you give up on the return end? Well, I guess it depends on what company you go for, but I heard some companies are as high as 7 or 8% in their, in their dividends. Yeah, and what are they investing in? Uh, uh, subprime mortgages, foreclosed homes? I mean, how are they getting 7% yield? Uh, it depends on the company, I suppose. Yeah, but uh, do you know? Yeah, well, one company that had been offered this policy, you know, I think they said that they had one half of 1% of their investments in the subprime market. So they're not going to be affected by it at all. And in terms of financial strength, they're very strong, have have paid up the dividends for years. And how and much years. do you have to pay in commission to an insurance sale? Uh, I think they, they, they get their commission out just out of the annual premium up front. But no. as I continue to pay the policy, uh, you know, my cash value increased. Uh, obviously, municipal bonds are another option where there's, there's tax-free advantages. Yes, I'm a, a big. By the way, I'm a big fan of municipal bonds, but I'm a big fan of them in terms of like a mutual fund, rather than right. you trying to understand the intricacies of individual bonds. I think you're better off buying a bond mutual fund, and uh, that takes care of various maturities that are all averaged together, various yields. Uh, protects okay. you against, uh, you know, if one particular county collapses the way Orange County did a few years ago, you're still covered. Okay. Fair enough. Can you big fa big Elliott fan Elliott of mutual bonds. Uh, municipal bonds. I'm sorry. What, what was that? Can you take me out of Elliot Spitzer style? Elliot Spitzer style. Of course I can. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how the heck are you? I'm doing okay. Let's 
Justin, man. Uh, I think it was yesterday your show about um, about kids and not having kids and people who wouldn't live in certain area codes and stuff. If they, you know, well, that was a few days ago. That was not yesterday. A few days ago. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, always, 909 was first on their list of places they wouldn't live, and 951 be, not even being mentioned on the, you know. Uh, for whatever reason. Because I think most people outside the IE don't know 951. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I think that um, I think that the Inland Empire has actually some really cool spots and some really nice places. And uh, I think that people um, are just not well enough informed about it to, you know, create their opinions. Well, uh, I understand what you're saying. Uh, we all know uh, that as far as the air is concerned, the air quality in the IE is um, the worst in Southern California. Yeah. And the last time I was uh, in San Bernardino, I, I had a headache that wouldn't quit. San Bernardino is pretty bad. But what about, like, Palm Springs and, you know, downtown pa Riverside? Palm Springs like would never claim to be part of the Inland Empire. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on. I guess you're right. On that, that basis, uh, Staten Island's part of the Inland Empire. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> oh, well. I just... Uh, yeah, Palm of... Springs not even in the 909. No, it's not. 951, I believe. But anyway, <laughs> you know, I'm not like... I'm not in, I'm in love with the IE or anything, but I've lived there. and You I'm know, back if I were doing a local show and it wasn't heard in other cities... Uh-huh. I think we were on to something. I think I would do a whole show and just ask me what area code do you not want to tell people you're in. <laughs> yeah. I'd, That's I'd a show. I, I'm going to do a local hour one of these nights just talking about that. I'd Name the area code. You, you wouldn't even want to give people your phone number if you were in this area code. And I think 909 would turn up a lot. I think so. I think so. There's always the debate, you know, people from L.A., people from Orange County, they, they always have a hate on the IE people. And the funny thing is, the IE people, they don't really care. It's funny because, you know, people in Orange County, you know, oh, you guys are just a bunch of dirt people and a bunch of, you know, low class, white trash and, and everything. And IE people are like, all right, that's cool. You know, I'll go to Orange County next week. And I'll have a good time. You know, they, they, don't, they really don't care. I think it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm laughing it up over here. Yeah. <laughs> all I all I know is if if you're picking up chicks, you want your cell phone to have a three ten area code. That is absolutely true. You would be a absolutely fool true. to say my number is nine oh nine. Don't even think about. It. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. I have a seven one four area code, and that's even a little bit better than having a nine five one or nine oh nine. You know. That's right. So. I mean, so, uh, so you see, already you know the perception of the 909. Oh, I'm completely aware of the perception, completely aware, and I understand the perception. I would just, you know, want to let people know that, it, you know, there's actually some really nice places and stuff. You know, uh, I was looking to uh, right. move downtown Riverside, and there's Look, some really neat Look, I want to tell you something. Though. If I ever decide to take up tweaking, <laughs> there's no place I'd rather be. Damn it, I think we'd be better for that. <laughs> I would be at the Steve Howe Memorial Rest Area there on I-10. Yes. <laughs> hey, you'd fit right in, I tell you that. Yep. Tell you what. I mean, that's the meth capital of the planet. I think it still is. So you see, that's why a lot of people say the 909 would give them a little trepidation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, there's still some... It shocked me because a lot of places are kind of... Are kind of you know, pretty classy. I think that people kind of want to live there, but, you know, for the people that don't really like to live in the city type environment, you know? Yes. So. But wait a minute, know. you don't think Riverside is a city type environment? Oh, no, Riverside City is for sure, yeah. But, you know, you can drive a few miles and be out of. Well, like you know. Norco? Oh, God. <laughs> if you like dairies, I guess, huh? Norco made sure they shortened their name to Norco from North Corona so nobody would mistake it for Corona. You're right. <laughs> But that was a mistake, because I think Corona is nicer than Norco. When I first came to town, I thought Norco was the name of a gas station. <laughs> yeah, I stopped be. at Norco, and I got 10 gallons of unleaded. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, thanks a lot, man. I can't believe I made it, made it into the show. Thanks a lot, Dean. And uh, uh, take me out. Oh, I'll, uh, thank uh, Dean. I'll thank Dean in my own special way later on. <laughs> well, that's between you guys. Tom, have a great night. Josh, thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom Likas. I'm from Mexico, and uh, this is pretty much the first show I have ever heard in my life. My English is not that good, but with your show, I learned a lot of English. Oh, so tell us some of the English phrases you learned here. Um, Tom, Tom, bitch. <laughs> and, uh, pretty much just phrases like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Leanne on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Leanne. Am I interrupting something, Leanne? Okay. When you come out of your coma... Call us back. Thank you. It's Doug on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, good evening, Tom. How are you? Great. Well, um, I've been uh, listening to you for two years now, and I tend to believe in the tenets of Tom Likas. Uh, but I feel like uh, the the captain of the Exxon Valdez, I've, I'm, I've lost my course, and I might be heading for a, an iceberg, and I, I guess I need somebody to take the wheel for me. What happened? Well, I've got a, a beautiful girlfriend who uh, got deported to Sweden. We've been together for about two years. Now she's back in Sweden. I'm here. Um, I've got a fairly successful job. I, I make about 75000 a year uh, with the potential of making more. But our company's kind of on the rocks right now. Um, she, I, I am thinking about moving to Sweden, um, uh, not necessarily for love, but the financial possibilities. Um, now, let's start with this. Okay. Do you have a Swedish passport or a, an EU passport? No, but I have applied for uh, what's called a temporary residency, which lasts a year. So I'm free to come back after a year. You mean you have to leave after a year? I Exactly. You're free to right. come back any time. I would be kicked out just like she was kicked out of the U.S., yes. Right. So you're talking about taking a long vacation. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Well, what are you talking? What is this nonsense you give me about the uh, financial possibilities? There's no financial possibilities for you. You can't work in Sweden. Um, well, you can with uh, with the right paperwork. You can, but you don't have it. Uh, well, it doesn't take much to get it. Um, she's financially well off. She owns her own house. Uh, she could support me for quite a few months until I got my feet wet, so to speak. But you don't speak Swedish. You don't have a passport. You don't have the paperwork. Even if you get the paperwork, you can't stay for more than a year. Well, I can apply for an extension. Listen, I, what? why did you let her stay beyond her welcome the first time in the United States? Uh, well, she was on a student visa, and she made 80000 a year here, and so she got deported for essentially making too much money. Well, wait a minute. She's not supposed to be making any money. Correct. So, you know, $10 is too much money. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. There's, there's part of me that uh, sees this country eroding, and uh, I don't know. Well, have you ever been to Sweden? I mean, you've never even been there, right? Uh, for one week. Right. One week. It's cold. <laughs> the people are cold. It's isolated because of the language. Not many people speak it. You are not a citizen. This is a country where people are used to seeing lots of very white people like themselves who speak Swedish which is not you. So you can have one friend. <laughs> you may not have a job. And you talk about this country eroding. You're coming back here in a year, pal, so get used to it. This is where you are from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you left me uh, dumbfounded. 
Now, she is out of the country for how long before she can reapply to come back in? Can she ever come back? She can come back uh, any time in the next six months. Oh, she can? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the point of that? Why do let you have her come over here? Um, well, the I mean, it, it seems like the lifestyle over there would be a lot less... Uh, a lot less dependent on the economy. I mean, because well, that's because they've got the highest know, taxes it's... in the world, right? But you're taking care of the rest of your life, right? You know, in America, you're not uh, guaranteed a retirement plan. Well, that's because uh, you can make as much as you like and don't have to pay all those taxes. So essentially, I'm being lazy by thinking that uh, I'll let yes. the government take care of me. That's right. Not to mention the fact I don't know if you have any career aspirations or fulfillment needs, uh, you will not be able to do that if you start taking years off and running away. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right that I'm, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth right now. Considering... Absolutely. Well, Tom, thank you for uh, once again refocusing me. I think uh, iceberg averted. Okay, good. Can you take me out with a bong hit? Uh, no cough. Yes, I can. Here you go. No cough. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Is Leanne back to the phone? I think so. Yes, Le I'm here, Tom. That's great. Hello, Tom. What are we drinking tonight, Leanne? I'm drinking uh, Casadores. Yeah. There we go. Are and you drinking Blanco, uh, Reposado, or Añejo? Uh, Reposado. I Reposado. Yeah, I don't go for the cheap stuff, Tom. I, you're not a cheap date. No. No, I'm not, but I make good money, and I I buy my own Casadores. There we go. So you've got, uh, you're drinking shots of Casadores, Reposado, and what else? Corey's light, my husband's pissed off because I'm waiting to talk to you. Really? Look really? At that. Little Coors light, tequila on the side. Yes. And, very nice. Um, very nice. It's good. It's good buzz. We're in Santa Barbara. We're uh, looking out on the beach right now. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say anything bad. I didn't say any bad words. Uh, or anything uh, like that. Rah, 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 rah. You can't say the only word you can say that ends in "uck" is "truck." Okay. You can't say no. Say, okay, I won't say it again. Are you there, Tom? Yes, I'm barely here, but I'm here. Yes. Well, you have a very sexy voice. I love it. <laughs> I'm here on the beach. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. I'm going to have to do some serious something or other to get my husband to not be pissed off at me. But I wanted to comment on... I can step into the breach, you know. I uh, know. I love my husband. We're celebrating 12 years. He pisses me off sometimes, but... So you don't, you don't do any freelance work on the side there? No. Nope. I'm a one-man woman. You know, I own a place in Santa Barbara County. You could uh, roll on over. Well, I I heard you bought a place in Santa Barbara County, and that's very cool because it's an awesome place. My husband grew up here. Sounds like a great place to kick back and have a few shots. I've had a little too many shots. I need to go find my husband and do some serious something or rather to bring him back, and I'm ready to do that. Very good. And um, I wanted to co uh, comment on the coffee baristas. Yes, what about them? By the way, Leanne, uh, is a male barista a baristo? I don't know. I I know that I went to college for seven long years to get an engineering degree. In Italy, would two baristas be baristi? No. I don't think they deserve tips. Oh. They're... Um, they're doing their job, their menial job. They're making me freaking coffee, which I, I very seldom buy because it's ridiculously overpriced for what it is. Yes, you're making noises or... 
Uh, whatever. What are you background. talking about? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Come on, Tom. Hello, Tom. Now we move later in the action. Don't do your little sound side effects for me. Oh. Well, I do them for everybody. Okay. Well, I'm a very intelligent woman. I know you hate intelligent women. But I'm a little buzzed right now, so my really? intelligence... Where's your husband? My husband's pissed off, and he's down on the beach somewhere, and i got to go find him and uh, make him happy. Okay. And uh, what? What, what are we drinking tonight? I already told you that. It's um, Casadoras and Coors Light. Oh, I see. Tell me, tell me what, the, uh, what that sound effect is called. It, it doesn't have a name. Oh, really? Well, last time I called you, um, several of my coworkers recognized my voice, and it was not good. Didn't like your voice on the radio? Oh, no. I guess I have a unique voice because... Oh, uh, they all recognized you. Yes, they did, and I'm very conservative and a very good worker. <laughs> so it wasn't a good thing. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're not listening tonight. Right. <laughs> Why are they making the pig squealing sound? Because I'm certainly not a pig. That's not a pig squealing, dear. What is it? Oh, it, it's not? No. What is it? It's a hiccup, dear. All right. Tom. Yes. You, you have something intelligent to say to me because I'm a very intelligent... Well, I didn't call you. Well, Okay. Do you have something intelligent to say? I don't know who you are. You called me. Well? If you have a specific question, I'll answer it. Go ahead. Um, do you think uh, coffee baristas deserve tips? Because I sure as I did a whole know. show about that. No. I don't either. Um, you already said why. Yes, I know. Who do you want for president? Obama. Why? Because we need change. Just because we need change? No, because he was the only one who was against the war in Iraq. End of story. Well, I want a woman to be president, but I certainly, certainly do not want that woman to be president. Well, then you've got Obama or McCain. What the hell is that squeaking sound in the background? Thank you, darling. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Let's say hello here to uh, Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. How uh, are you? I'm okay. Fantastic. Uh, that was like pulling teeth, Tom. Oh Jesus. I know. Um, anyway, um, it's a pleasure. But I wanted to weigh in on uh, that guy who called in about the IE, the Inland Empire. We call it the IE out here because I grew up out here and it yeah. was. Uh, it's a hole. It's the armpit of Southern California, and um, it's a waste of your time to uh, even visit because of the fact that uh, you have so many cooler places to go, like uh, San Diego, L.A., things of that nature, uh, even Palm Springs, if you really want to go that far, but you still have to pass through the IE. And uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, San, San Bernardino 10, she's about the equivalent of a San Diego, I'd say, 6. And that's being generous. That's being really generous. Um, and they act as if they're like, you know, the, the coolest thing since sliced bread. Now, the I want to know where we're going to get the real housewives of Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, geez. You know, I, you know, honestly, I think people would tune into that because it'd just be a lot of fighting and drunkenness and drugs. And, you know, that'd be the real drama. I don't want to see all these gold digging idiots, you know. Well, I like money, but, you know, I like his too. Okay. So anyway, I want to lay on that and just let them know that, you know, their claim to fame out here is, uh, Nothing except for we're building more houses, and uh, it's just a saturated market. Another proud IE resident checking in on the Tom Likas show. Write me at Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.